London Borough of Redbridge Council defines the cost of living crisis as a scenario in which the cost of everyday essentials like energy and food is rising much faster than average household incomes. And what this means is it means that the salary you get from work or the salary you get from a job is not enough to cater for everyday essentials. It is not enough to cater for the rising cost in the market and that is what is leading to a crisis in people's ability to live and to survive now the cost of living crisis has has had many people who live in the uk worrying about the future and while it might it might not be possible to return to the past there are a few things you can do to make your life more affordable and to really help you to survive this cost of living crisis that is what this video is all about today i'm going to be showing you and i'm going to be giving you practical tips on how to really deal with the cost of living crisis in the uk now just to add more value into your life. I'm also going to, be, going to be providing two bonuses in addition to the other practical tips that I'm going to be providing. So I'm going to be providing you five practical tips, but it's going to be two bonuses. So keep on watching if you desire to keep your spending costs low, living in the UK, or if you're new to the UK, to keep those spending costs low and Keep on watching if you really want to survive this cost of living crisis happening in the UK. Now, some of the practical tips I'm going to provide you, you may have heard, but I'm going to provide you with more depth and more insight into it so that you can actually practice it in your everyday life. And hopefully, I believe you'll be able to survive this cost of living crisis. So keep on watching. Welcome to Acosia UK, helping you to navigate in the UK as a newbie. I hope you enjoy this channel. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. So number one, a budget plan. Have a budget plan. You cannot survive this cost of living crisis without a budget plan. Now what a budget plan is, it, it is simply giving every aspect of your money. So your money may come from a fixed salary. Your money may come from a business that you own. Wherever your money comes from, if it's a salary, for example, it would involve you giving every inch and every aspect of your money a name. And when you're able to give every inch or every aspect of your money a name, okay, you can then put all of your expenses into a table and you can then allocate it a numerical value. So let me give you a practical example. You might receive a hundred pounds a week. You might say, okay, 20 pounds of that hundred pounds is going to food. 20 pounds of that hundred pounds is going for my travel. 20 pounds of that hundred pound is going to um, buying clothes. And also the final 20 pounds is, is going to buying credit for your phone, for example. Okay. So what you have done and what I've just shown you is basically how you give each aspect of your money a name. So you have divided that hundred pounds into four and you have allocated 20 pounds each for four different things. Number one, your food. Number two, your travel. Number three, your clothes. And number four, your credit. Okay. So that is what I mean by you have to give each aspect of your money a name okay divide your money into your expenses the number of expenses you have and give it a name okay so when you give your money a name so if you earn 500 pound divide it in divide it by how many expenses you have for that particular month or for that particular week and then um that would tell you or that would give you a rough idea of what what goes into what and what must go into and how much you may have left at the end of it now that is just like the first step all right the second step after you do that 
is to record your expenses okay record your expenses um your expenses can be found in your bank statement so if you have a bank statement you can find a record of all of your expenses for the entire month okay for the entire month and you can use that as a starting point um so you can look at maybe your grocery shopping so you can when you look at your bank statement you kind of categorize all of your spending into specific categories so you might have your grocery shopping you might have um your meal out with friends you might have utility costs you might have rent you might have phone bill um for example and you just you just make sure you begin to write that down okay write down all of your expenses every month what are you spending your money on begin to write it down is it food is it your um going to salon is it traveling um is it your phone bill you know begin to write all of those expenses down and then that will give you an indication of your spending habits um and how much you spend on each thing or each activity and once you have listed all of your expenses and you can then place them into specific categories okay um, and then you can set a realistic spending limit on each of those categories so for example if you look for your bank statement for the month you might have seen that you spend 800 pounds on your rent so then you put you put rent so you make you make rent a category and then you put 800 pound because you know you know that that is a fixed amount that you have to pay every single month so that is and that is a great need because it means that you have a roof over your head so once you have listed all of your expenses you place them into specific categories and then and then you set a realistic spending limit on each so there are some that's going to be fixed like maybe your phone bill your travel and your rent that might be fixed okay you already know what's gonna that's gonna cost but with the other ones like food for example you have some flexibility as to how much you spent okay you might you might have spent a certain amount and you might want to reduce that amount for the for the upcoming month and you can easily do that because that one is more flexible so look at all of your expenses look at the ones that are fixed look at the ones that you can you know it can be reduced and then write it down okay into your budget plan now when you when you do it like this so when you put your expenses you put um you set a realistic spending limit for each of them you will be able to also see the areas that you might potentially be overspending in because you might put your expenses down all the expenses you have um from your bank statement and then you can say okay maybe that particular month you spent too much on food so you can decide for your for your next month's budget plan you're going to reduce your spending on food okay so budget plan enables you to see the areas that you're overspending in and it will also help you to clearly see your spending habits as well and you'll be able to also cut down on certain expenses as well um if you need help creating a budget plan um i've left a link below in the description um description section below um where you can access my free budget budget plan that i use on a monthly basis and that i personally created all right so just fill in that form if you would like an already made budget plan that actually works okay so i hope that's clear so let's move on to number two <clears throat> so before i go on to number two i'm going to reveal onto you the first bonus okay and this first bonus point ties in very very well with this budget plan tip Okay, and that is Dave Ramsey's envelope method. Now, who is Dave Ramsey and why am I mentioning his name? Now, Dave Ramsey is a very, very popular author in the financial management niche. Okay, and he developed a method called the envelope method and we have named it after him. He has named it after himself and he's called it Dave Ramsey's envelope method. And this method, I believe, is used hand in hand with your budget form. Because when you have your budget form, you will be able to know your expenses. You'll be able to know how much you're going to spend on each expense, okay, and how much you do spend on each expense. For example, if it's rent, for example, it's a fixed amount. If it's not a fixed amount, you'll be able to set your own spending limit for that, okay. Um, but it has this this method has to be used with the budget form. It's very very important. Now, this method is based on the idea that in that 
it, when you list your expenses, when you list your spending method, when you put a budget for each expense, okay, instead of you saying, okay, you're going to spend £100 on food, for example, and then you're, you're going to be using your card to track that spending, what he suggests is that he suggests that you put each of your budget categories money into an envelope. Okay, so for example, if it's food, you might have budgeted a hundred pound, or you might have put a spending limit of a hundred pound for food. He's saying that instead of you using your card to say, okay, I'm going to spend a hundred pound on food because cards you can't really track it. He says it's better to withdraw that money from an ATM machine, okay, and put that a hundred pound into an envelope, okay, and he says. When you put that £100 as cash into an envelope, it will discipline you to spend only what you have put into that cash envelope. Okay, so let me give you another example. You might have budgeted um, £50 for your travel for the month. Now, as soon as you get paid, you withdraw that £50 from an ATM machine. If you don't know what ATM machine is, ATM machine is where you basically withdraw cash from from your account you can withdraw cash from and when you've drawn that 50 pounds you put it into an envelope you then write on that envelope travel okay so there's 50 pound and that is only for travel so you only use that 50 pound for travel that is it as soon as that 50 pound is spent you can't spend any more on travel OK, and what this method does is that it really, really disciplines you with your spending habits. OK, it really, really disciplines you. Um, and there are other benefits Okay, that I'm going to show you right now, such as it helps you to keep on track. Um, as I've said earlier on, it disciplines you. It holds you accountable because at least you know that, OK, you, for example, in the example I've provided, you said you're going to put 50 pounds for travel. That means you are accountable to how you spend that £50. You must ensure that it's only spent for travel. And also it makes it very, very difficult for you to overspend. You know, you have to be really, really disciplined, basically. And I think it's a very, very fantastic way for you to be able to spend less, but to still be able to do what you have to do. OK, now Dave Ramsey says that his system um, of using cash envelopes are very, very powerful weapons in the fight against overspending. Okay, so he has said it himself. It helps you to fight against overspending. So if you really want to survive this cost of living crisis in the UK, then the first way really is to find ways that you can cut down on things that are not really necessary that you spend money on that will really help you to make sure you have extra money for the month that is going to come next all right so the second tip i want to give you is to shop smart okay shop smart avoid designer labels um as much as much as you know they are in fashion as much as you may you may be you may be tempted to try to avoid design labels because they are one thing and that is expensive try and shop around for discounts okay try and shop around for discounts so for example um, if you go to a supermarket, you're going to buy food, for example. Um, there are supermarkets in the UK, such as Aldi and Lidl. And these are probably known as the cheaper supermarkets um, in the UK. However, because of this um, inflation rate going up and so forth, these shops are also incre um, increasingly rising in price as well. So I cannot really say this, these two supermarkets are cheap anymore. OK, however, um, what I want you to know is that there are ways to save money on shopping for food in particular. And there are also ways to save um, money on shopping for clothes. And that I will reveal that in the next bonus that I will reveal to you um, nearing the end of this video. So please make sure you keep watching so that you don't miss that last bonus. OK, so with grocery, there, there are many ways that you can also save money. So in a range of supermarkets such as Aldi, Lidl, Morrison's, Sainsbury's, there are so many supermarkets. I think every supermarket in the UK, they have, they will either have a supermarket app, okay, which will give you points um, whenever you shop with them. So for example, Aldi, they have a fantastic app um, 
Lido, they have a fantastic app called Lido Plus, um, where when you shop with them, you just scan, there's going to be a code in the app, you open the app, you scan the code um, when you are when you are paying for your item, and it gives you points, and when you get a certain level of points, they then provide you with discounts and offers as well on their other items, okay, some supermarkets as well also um, do not have apps, but they may have cards available, so you can actually register for a card, and what this card does is it does exactly the same as the app does it basically provides you with offers and discounts when you shop with them you just give the card to the um shop assistant and then they will scan the card for you when you have made your shop and then that will give you points and then when you build up enough points you would soon be getting offers and discounts on certain items in the shop um so you can always sign up for these cards at the till when you're paying for your item just ask the sales assistant there so for example sainsbury's they have nectar cards um nectar cards so you can always go to sainsbury's ask for ask they want to be registered for a nectar card and that will also provide you with a discount or an offer aside from that as well aside from those apps aside from those cards um there is a fantastic smartphone app called too good to go and this is a gem. Some many people don't know about this app. Some do, some don't. Okay, but this is basically an app that connects you to restaurants, cafes, shops, and local businesses that basically have food that didn't sell. Okay, so these restaurants, cafes, and shops, and local businesses, businesses are show, um are, are basically going to sell these foods that didn't sell on that day, but they will sell those foods at a discounted price, so at a lower price. OK, so that is another way to save money because you might have spent maybe £10 on that food if it was if it did sell um, or if they were selling on the shop. But because it didn't sell through that app, they're able to provide you with a discount price. This is another way that you can save like money. All right. And when you save money, you will have more money for the next month that will come for you. All right. Aside from that. Another piece of advice I want to give you, another tip I want to give you is to create a need, to create a needs versus wants list. Okay. And to focus primarily on your needs. Okay. Everybody has needs. Everybody has wants. Needs are items that you can't live without. These are items that you cannot survive without. For example, you need to have a roof over your head to, to have shelter. You need to have food to be able to survive. These are kind of needs. These are things you need. And wants are things that you just desire because of passion or pleasure. Okay. For example, you might soon buy, you might, we might want to buy a book from a popular author, for example, it's something that you want, but it's not something that you need. All right. Now there's a popular theory by Maslow called hierarchy of needs. And he states that every individual has five core needs, which, which need to be fulfilled to make a, um, like, which means, which needs to be met to make a fulfilled individual. And that is, um, physiological need. Okay. That's like your food, your clothing. Next one is safety. Um, and this can include job security as well. The third one is love and belonging needs. Okay. So the ability to, or the desire to, um, be in a, a, a loving relationship, a loving friendship. Um, the next one is esteem. So that's like your confidence, your your self-worth. And the, the final one, the fifth one is self-actualization. Now, um, aside from you creating this needs versus wants list, you can also use this theory by Maslow to be able to put all of your um, all of your expenses in a needs versus wants list as well. And then you'll be able to know what is really, really essential and what can wait. Okay. And what can wait is normally your wants, but what can't wait is normally your needs. You need your needs to be able to live a fulfilled life. Yeah. All right. So the third tip I want to give you to survive this cost of living crisis in the UK is to buy in bulk. Okay. Buy in bulk. When you are doing food shopping, try and buy in bulk. Many supermarkets today are selling food in 5kg bags or even more. 
okay and when you buy in bulk you are able to save money you can save around 20 pounds a week just by buying in bulk when you buy in bulk it means that you don't have to keep on returning to the supermarket to restock on items that have finished um especially if you bought like you didn't buy it in bulk you bought maybe a small version of that item if that small version of that item was to finish you're gonna have to go to the supermarket again and buy another one but if you buy in bulk it can last you longer and it can also save you money as well aside from that consider purchasing um bulk food in um bulk food for pasta and rice these are items that can last a long length of time they don't have a short expiry date um items as canned food frozen vegetables um are also very very good and valuable items and they can last for a very very long time as well um and they can help you especially in a time of need all right another item that's really good to have as well is bread bread can be brought very very affordably very very cheaply from supermarkets or local bakeries and you can store it in your freezer as well um, to just preserve its life as well all right so buy in bulk it will also help you to save money the fourth tip i'm going to give you is to simply say no to takeaways okay reduce takeaways try your best to eat at home all right takeaways can be surprisingly expensive i know in today's era they have a lot of apps such as uber eats um such as um delivero which all provide um food from common restaurants um to straight to your house okay so it can be very very tempting to just pick up your phone and order something from a restaurant with a with your with the touch of your hand okay but what you must realize is that if you consistently buy takeaways every single day using these apps for example or even just calling the restaurant and making an order those little costs or those costs that you may consider little will add up and then when you realize you have spent so much money so for example if you eat out or if you order a takeaway once a week okay one day a week and you spend 30 pounds for example for that one takeaway and you do that once a week for that entire month you have spent 210 pounds just on takeaways and if you had saved that money you would have had an, a lot of money to keep you for like for 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 later all right so try and say no to takeaways it's not a bad thing to have takeaways once in a while but don't make it a regular habit always you will end up spending money that you can save all right so the fifth tip that i want to give you is waste not and want not okay waste not and want not this is basically the principle that do not waste food okay um especially if you have prepared a meal at home especially a large meal at home or maybe you have for example ordered food if you did order food maybe you've ordered food and you have leftovers for tomorrow okay try and not throw it away try and not waste it but rather you can put them in containers and you can freeze them in 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 the freezer or you can put them in containers and put them in a fridge just to preserve its life and then you can eat it the following day all right, this will really, really help to save money too. And now I'm going to the second bonus. All right, so thank you for staying on this video. Thank you for watching this video to this particular point. This is the final bonus that I'm going to provide you, and that is use money saving apps. Use money saving apps. Now, there are many money saving apps that many people don't know about okay and there are many money saving apps that you can use to save money okay for online shopping in particular so there there are a few that i've put on on the screen that you can see but there are also many others and i will provide a short demonstration as to how to get all of these money saving apps on your phone because all of these apps on the screen and the ones that i'm going to mention they can all be um 
they can all be installed onto your phone as a phone app okay so they're just right at your disposal all right so we have top cashback we have quido we have as the rewards we have little plus we have plum um another one as well that i use a lot that has been really really great is honey okay so there's an extension called honey there's a chrome extension and honey has a chrome extension and honey also has a a phone app so you can download the app on your phone or you can download the chrome extension on your laptop as well and what the honey extension does just like many of just like all of the ones on the screen do is that they give you points and they give you discounts once you reach the checkout of every online store so i know honey in particular when you shop with honey um as soon as you get to the checkout you know of buying that item they basically try and automatically find discounts for you and to find coupons for you um so you can get a discount on your your shop basically um so that's a really really good app i do recommend honey um personally because i do use it um, but other apps, mobile apps like Quido, Top Cashback, Plum, As The Rewards, Little Plus are fantastic as well. They help you to get points and cash in return for your money. So in particular, As The Rewards, when you use As The Rewards app and you go to As The and you shop for any um, item, whether it be food, whether it be clothing, for example, and you, you are ready to pay for your item, you just have to scan your app and then... Um, they'll give you points for your shop and they will also give you cash back as well. So they'll actually put cash back into your 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 app for you so that you can use it for another shop. So that's really, really good. You can really, really save money that way. Now, I will show you um, after this basically how to install all of these apps onto your phone or um, with Honey, how to also get the Chrome extension. But you can also install Honey on your phone as well all right now i just want to give some disadvantages before i get there and some of the disadvantages of using these money saving apps is that some of these money saving apps do not have full um, financial services compensation scheme attached to them so the financial services compensation scheme um protection okay um basically um it's, it's basically like kind of like an assurance for your money like if anything else to happen to your money whilst being in that whilst being in that app for example they would that company will be able to pay you back your money okay that's basically all it is but if you want to know more about the financial services compensation scheme and the financial services compensation schemes protection please watch my previous video on how to open a bank account in the uk and um, I will provide it at the end of this video. So how to open a bank in the UK. And that video will provide you more information on what the financial services compensation scheme is all about. Aside from that as well, another disadvantage to some may be that you need, you need to actually have a smartphone to use um, any of these money saving apps um, with the exception of Honey. So Honey, you can actually install it as a Chrome extension um, on your laptop or you can actually install the app as well. Um, aside from that as well, these are money saving apps. Some of them provide um, cash back, like as a reward. Some of them don't. Some of them just provide discounts on shops. All right. So I just wanted to provide these disadvantages to you as well so that um, you can bear these things in mind before you decide to use them. Aside from that, the greatest disadvantage, um, the greatest advantage of these money saving apps is that you save money that is the greatest advantage and they are proven to work and people are really saving a lot of money just by taking part in their local shop all right so these apps are worth it all right so do go and check them out i am going to show you how to get all of these apps on the screen onto your mobile device especially if you shop in any of these supermarkets i'll show you how to get them onto your phone all right. In this part of the video, I just want to show you where to get the money saving apps onto your phone. Um, and you can do this in two ways. You can either do it through your browser, your web browser on your laptop or your computer, or alternatively, you can click on Google Play Store if you have an Android phone or Apple Store if you have an Apple phone um, and also search for the money saving apps on there. All right, so 
I'm going to show you how to do it through a Chrome extension. So the first thing you must do is you must go to the address bar right here and just type in google.co.uk. Read this message and understand it. it's just talking about cookies. Um, I've seen this message a thousand times, so I know what it says. So I'm just going to accept it. All right, so I'm just going to um, show you how to get access to the Honey Chrome extension. Okay. Um, and I'm also going to show you how to um, also access the Quido uh, mobile money saving app. Okay, now I'm only going to show you those two. Um, and what I want you to know is that all you have to do is just, just repeat the process for all the other ones that you may want. So, for example, Top Cashback, um, that one is only through internet is only through your using your laptop or your computer that you can get access to that website um, you can also use it on your phone though as well by going on your phone web browser but for the purpose of just this demonstration I'm going to show you how to access Honey, Chrome extension and Quidco all right and just follow the same process for the other ones that I mentioned to you earlier on in the video all right so the first one I'm going to look, talk to you about is Honey Chrome extension so just type in Google Honey Chrome extension and then just tap enter and then it's not the first one just scroll down um and so yeah just scroll down you're going to find the actual website so this one w um you can click on this one www.joinhoney.com or if you scroll down you can also find it here as well which says um, http um, chrome.google.com this one as well so if you click on this one you will see something like this this is like um, google um, chrome web store um, because i already have it on my chrome um, you can see that right here um, it's it's faded out but for you if you don't have it it's going to be blue there's going to be a blue background to it you just click on it and it will add the extension automatically as you can see five star reviews is a very very good app um i believe that it is a very very good extension and i believe that they also have an app now so you can also install it in, onto your phone as well automatically as well if you want to install it onto your laptop that is how you go about it okay if you go back as well so if i clicked on the first one which says um this one join honey here as well click on this one yeah you can also this is the honey official website you can also add it add the chrome extension by clicking on this as well and it will add the chrome extension for you as well so just know that there's multiple um websites on here that allow you to install the chrome extension but i would say just stick with the joinhoney.com one or scroll down and look for um, the one that is available on play.google.com um, to actually install the Chrome extension for you or this one chrome.google.com as well that's also acceptable so those are the three you can click on all right so now I'm going to show you how to get access to Quid Quidco just type in Quidco, Quidco app on your on, on Google, click on search, and then as you can see, it's come up straight away. Click on this. All right, so basically, this allows you to add a Chrome extension, okay? But if you go back, um, you can go down, just click on whenever you see play.google.com, this is for um, this is. This will also enable you to also install the app automatically on your phone, especially if your Gmail account is connected to your phone. Um, your your number and your number is stored in your Gmail account. You'll be able to actually install the app through the computer. So if you click on this one, play.google.com, okay, you will actually be able to automatically install the Quidco Cashback app on your phone. And make sure that you do log in. So over here, if you click on over here, it will enable you to actually log it in there as well. If you click on it, it'll just say sign in with Google, sign in, and then make sure that your device, your mobile device is connected. You can put that here and then it can automatically 
install it onto your phone without you actually even using your phone all right so as you scroll down you're going to see some reviews some is positive some is negative um but it's, it's just good to try it out all right and see if it works for you okay so that's quidco so with all the other apps that I've spoken to you about, such as such, such as Asda Rewards, for example, you just type in Asda Rewards app, and then if you're using the Apple phone, look for the look for the website that says that says apps.apple.com, okay, because that's to be for Apple Store. So I click on this one. This is only for people who have an iPhone or some kind of Apple device. You'll be able to install this app onto your phone as well so as you can see good and bad reviews um i have personal users i find this incredible because they give you money back um this is for apple users all right and if you go down and you scroll down you're going to see one for android phone users that's play.google.com click on this one and you're going to see it for you're going to be able to install it onto your phone if you are a um, android phone user all right or alternatively you kind of go on to google play store which looks like this on your phone as well if you have an android phone and you can install it by searching as the rewards on there as well all right so that's all i wanted to show you just that you are clear on actually how to get the app itself um especially if you're interested in using it all right so now aside from that i hope you found value in today's video i sure found a bit of value in my video um because I've shown you how to save money. All right. So that is the value that I feel I've added. All right. But I sincerely hope you have found value. Okay. And I hope that you'll be able to take into consideration all of these practical tips that I have provided to you. Um, and I hope that it'll be able to help you to survive this cost of living crisis. Like always, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Please do not forget that if you would like the budget form that I personally use, just click on the link below, fill in the form and the budget form will come straight to your email. Aside from that, please do not forget to like this video if it added value to you. Do not forget to share this video, especially if you know somebody who is in the UK who may need this, this information. Maybe you are new in the UK or maybe you know somebody who is new in the UK. Please share it to them so that when they come to the UK, they'll be able to um, financially manage you know, their, their salary and, and their money. And also do not forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more practical content and for more practical information on living in the uk for the very first time and you know having a effective stay in the uk as well all right so see you in the very next video